Hello and welcome to my weekly video blog and today on A Vogel Talks Menopause I'm going to be talking about six surprising things that can cause or worsen breast pain during the perimenopause and menopause. If you like my tips and advice then please subscribe and remember to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of all my new videos. Now, whilst we know that just the hormonal flux that's going on in the perimenopause and menopause can cause breast pain, there are other things that can make it worse, things that you may be doing that you're not actually aware of. So breast pain can fluctuate a lot during the perimenopause, especially if your periods are changing, you very often find that breast discomfort, nipple pain, breast tenderness, gets worse just before a, a period. But also, once your periods have stopped, you can still have a sort of monthly cycle, if you like. So the hormones are not high enough to trigger a bleed, but they can be still high enough to cause those monthly changes and symptoms at certain times. And breast pain, from you know all the questions I get back, breast pain still seems to be quite a common one in the first year or two of the menopause itself. So what I'm going to do today is look at some of the things that can be a, a contributory factor to breast pain and what you can do to help yourself. So number one is an unsupportive bra or a bra that's too tight or an underwired bra as well. So especially if you have underwired bras, they can really dig into the sides of your breasts and cause a lot of discomfort. So it's really important that once this first starts is to get yourself measured properly so that you're wearing the right size bra, a much more supportive bra. And apart from anything, it makes you look and feel better um, apart from anything else. Number two, did you know that your antiperspirant can be causing breast pain? And it's really interesting because you're more heavy handed with your dominant hand. So if you're right handed, you tend to put more antiperspirant under your left arm. And if you're left handed, you tend to put more antiperspirant under your right arm. And it's usually that side, the opposite side to your dominant hand, where you will get most of the breast pain. And some women tell me they only get it one-sided. And it's amazing how often it's to do with how much antiperspirant you put on. Remember too that antiperspirants block the, the, the holes under your arm so you can't actually sweat at all. So you imagine, especially if you're getting flushes and sweats, your body is desperate to lose that extra fluid and the sweat and it's got nowhere to go. And we do know, just from experience over the years, that very often this ends up causing a lot of um, breast discomfort. So what to do here is, is to go with just a deodorant. Go with a natural deodorant that doesn't block the pores, but obviously keeps you smelly, uh, smelling nice and sweet but you just can do without that, that breast pain. So what I normally suggest is one of our salt of the earth um, deodorants. They're really good. They don't cause any white stains or anything. You can get nicely scented ones and they work really well. I mean, I've used them when I've been traveling in, in heat over 40 degrees and I've still been smelling sweetly. Um, so number three, some medications can do it. Some women tell me that when they start HRT for the first few months, they get breast tenderness. And again, it's just due, due to the hormonal increases. But it's really important if you start HRT or other medication and you start to get breast pain, check the patient information leaflet just to see if it's a known side effect. But if you're in any doubt at all, then just ask your pharmacist and they'll be able to tell you whether this is okay and if not what you need to do next. Number four is your posture. So it can be back, neck or shoulder pain. So if you're um, hunching yourself up or, or you've got a lot of pain around the back or you're just sitting like this all day at your computer, that can cause changes to the way that your breasts feel as well. So just, you know, remember to sit up and back. And if you are getting any um, pain or discomfort with the back, the shoulders or the neck, then maybe see a chiropractor just to get an assessment to see if you need any kind of treatment for this. 
Number five is caffeine. It, it's the things that we like. So it can be things like caffeine. Some women tell me that they get breast discomfort the day after they've, they've had um, a few drinks from, uh, from the night before. So if your breast pain is, is sporadic, it only happens now and again, then maybe just look back 24 hours to see if you've been doing anything different that might be a contributory factor. And then at least you have that little bit more control. Remember too that salt can be a problem. Too much salt um, can affect the, the breasts as well. And number six is dehydration. I'm going on about the water again. When oestrogen falls, that can cause dehydration generally. If your body is really dehydrated, it will find places to hold on to water. And the common places are you get swollen ankles, you can get swollen hands, swollen feet, but you can get the swollen breasts as well. And a lot of uh, women find that this is a really common symptom just before a period as your oestrogen drops, your body needs that extra water and a really good indication that this is um, dehydration and water that's doing it is that your breasts basically become rock hard um, all of a sudden and they seem to swell. You might find you go up a size as well. So very often that's dehydration. So just remember a good litre and a half of plain water a day can often sort that out. Some people also find taking a kelp supplement can be really helpful for this. So it's worth trying it maybe for a month or two to see how you get on. So when do you see your doctor about breast pain and discomfort? This is such an important one to do. If you are getting regular discomfort, if you're getting lumps, if you are getting regular pain or pain or discomfort on a daily basis, if you're getting nipple changes, if you are getting um, nipple discharge, anything like that, please do go and see your doctor. Um, and I know if you um, if you um, go onto Google and just put in um, breast changes to look for, you can very often get a really good um, little pricey of all the things to look for when you need to go and just double check with your doctor. So I hope you found this one helpful. Um, I know for me it was the um, monthly dehydration that caused problems in the menopause, uh, perimenopause for me. And once I realised what the cause was, along with a kelp supplement, I found it made a huge difference. And it can do that within about a month or so. So these things are worth trying. If anybody out there has had any other issues or what have you done that's made a, a real difference for yourself, then please share them. We love to hear everybody's stories. And until then, I will see you next week for another edition of Avo Talks Menopause.